We're now joined by Dr. Susan Elza, Chief of Staff for Matt Rule in Nebraska Football, former Director of Athletics of the UIL for years, ran what was the mothership of high school sports and athletics and events in Texas. So, hey, Midway Girl, here we are in Waco, right here in Central Texas, having you on National Signing Day and so much more. What have the last few days been like for you since you made the announcement you were leaving for Lincoln? Well, first of all, Midway High forever. I cannot not say that. That's part of our school song there. Um, but it's been a total frenzy um, and, and one that I'm so glad to be a part of. Um, you know, it's so bittersweet to, to leave that role that I was in. I, I love, you know, our coaches and our athletes across the state. And, uh, but to have that opportunity to go for, go work for Coach Rule and, you know, help build the program at Nebraska, it just was, it was just a chance of a lifetime. And, and uh, so just a ton of emotions are swirling around and a lot of moving parts right now, but it's been very exciting. What is, what is job one for you as you, as you get there now? Well, to maybe quit drinking out of a, out of a fire hose, that would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the way I keep telling myself. Um, you know, very, I think, you know, you guys are, are very familiar with college football, but, and I felt like I was. I mean, obviously, I have a lot of, of friends and colleagues that coach at the college level. But, man, when you get behind the scenes, it's just, whoa, it's an Amber Alert going off. When you get behind the scenes, um, it's just a, it's a whole – it's a machine in there. And I don't know that I completely understood all the moving parts to it. So, uh, you know, I think what, what Coach Rule has charged me with is, is, you know, administratively trying to bring – you know, all the, all the different departments that operate under football together, um, you know, to bring the unity that we need to make the administrative decisions that, you know, that I can assist him with so he can coach and, you know, focus on, you know, coaching football and winning games. So it's been fun so far. Dr. Elza, it wasn't that long ago, at least it feels that way, when there was this guy from the Northeast named Matt Rule that we were all scrambling and Googling trying to figure out, like, who he was and – He's the next Baylor head coach and, and all of that. And, and, and as you probably are well aware, Texas ties or lack thereof was a, a huge thing uh, with a, a guy from outside the state. But obviously, uh, Sean Bell and Joey McGuire and David Wetzel uh, answered, answered the call there. Uh, how did you get to know Coach Rule? And, and obviously, he ingratiated himself well to the, the THSCA and, and it was all over the state and obviously wants to make Texas a, a remaining focal point. So can you kind of tell us just how this started and, and obviously grew into a relationship where he felt like you were going to be impactful for this program? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I'll, I'll, even, you know, in the prior staff before Coach Rule, I mean, I'd stop by and go to practices. I felt like that was part of my role as the athletic director of the state to, to build relationships with those college programs and, you know, because they were going to be ultimately – you know, you know, receiving our athletes, and we always want our programs at UIL to be in the best position possible. So, you know, stopping by practice was pretty frequent for me, and it was even, you know, a little bit more so, you know, once Joey and Wetzel and Sean got there, and, um, you know, because it just, you know, Matt builds a, a family atmosphere. So I got to know him, you know, just really very informal uh, that way. I mean, he's a very quick judge of people in a, in a good way. I mean, he, he recognizes your qualities in a hurry and I've, I'd always stayed, you know, in touch with him even when he left and went on to Carolina and supported him. And, you know, one thing that I've got to brag on with him is, you know, how, how well he builds relationships with people. And that's not always an easy task. And, you know, he, in my opinion, he did a great job of building relationships with the Texas high school football coaches and more importantly with Te Texas high school coaches association. And, um, I just think we had a lot of things in common, and I think Joey probably helped the cause, if I'm being real honest. Um, you know, Joey and I have known each other since we were, I call it knee-high to a grasshopper, because we grew up in the profession together up in DFW. Uh, my, my, 12 of my years in the career were spent at Allen ISD, and I'll, I'll, for, I'll never forget when he gave us one of our, back when Todd Graham was there, he gave us a, a loss. So Joey, I think, did a, you know, I didn't ask Joey to, but he always advocated for me, and so when this opportunity came, you know, Matt thought I was a natural fit, and I'm glad he did because um, I think I am. And, you, you know, I, I knew he was an incredible leader, but when you get to work with him firsthand and, and his staff, I mean, all the staff that he has with him and the former players, I mean, it is truly a family atmosphere, and, and you're all, you know, commonly working for a goal. Dr. Elza, what's more, um, I'm trying to think of the word, 
uh, the UIL is a massive organization. We're talking about, what, 12 to 1,400 schools, all of the various athletics, uh, sports, the events, et cetera. Not all of them are even athletics, but events and competitions. What is more of an undertaking, that or what you said, you've kind of been blown away behind the scenes of college athletics? Uh, they're equally challenging. Um you know, r- hey, right now, guys, y'all know this. We're undefeated, so everybody in the state of Nebraska loves us. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> y'all know. And yep. but what's beautiful about Nebraska, and this is one thing that you know, y'all hear you, you hear in the high school setting them talk about a one school town. Um, it's a one college state, and it doesn't have an NFL team. And you know, so it's there's there's I'm kind of digressing a little bit from the the question, but that's the beauty of it. Um, but you do feel. I mean, even for me, you know, I'm thinking I'm gonna come in. I'm I'm not an on the field coach. There's, they're not even notice if I come in the door, and that, that has been just exactly the opposite. And um, I think that you know, this is a funny fact for y'all that I got the other day, and I, it's, it's ironic that you asked this question. But you know, we had we have over a million participants. I think it was right about 1.5, um, you know, on our participation numbers. That's high school alone in our high school sports in UIL. And so I was sharing that fact with someone um, there at Nebraska, and they go, do you realize our state population isn't, isn't you know, it's just over a million. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't know if you can compare the contrast the two very well because, again, they're, you know, they're both uh, very dynamic and a lot of moving parts and a lot of things changing just very suddenly. I mean, that's just the best way to describe it. But I can tell you that the UIL job definitely equipped me for the, for the uh, Nebraska chief of staff job. And, and I'm blessed for that time because of that. Well, it's kind of the same thing, but like different ways, right? Where at the UIL, you've got all these schools that, that want to be best represented their way and come at you with different things in Nebraska. It's all people who want things. It's just the same thing. And it's a lot of them that care a lot. I mean, it is, and they have very high expectations, but they're very welcoming. I mean, they're, it really has, you know, people, we always, we always blame, claim here in Texas that, you know, we've got all this Southern hospitality and the other states don't have that, but uh, it may be a Midwestern hospitality, but that, that's, I've met and come across some of the nicest people. And, you know, even when you just go eat at a restaurant there in Lincoln and you, you're wearing the inn. I mean, they are so proud to, to represent that. So, I mean, it's just, like I said, they're, they're different. Um, they complement each other. Um, but, I mean, it, it, for me, one of the things that was so appealing about it was that it, they only have, it's a one college state. And, um, and, and I think you can build that way. And, and, again, their expectations are high, and you know, and they should be. Um, I think a lot of people don't understand the resources and the things that are offered to the athletes there. Uh, especially the football program, and um, I, I think I think we're sitting on a you know a very um, you know successful football program that is you know going to show its success on the field in the twenty three season. Doctor, obviously uh, you're higher, and, and I'm sure Matt Rule would have had interest even regardless of your your Texas ties, just because of the job that you do. If you'd been you know Massachusetts or something like that, but obviously having Texas ties comes with the the talent bed, and and he knows full well having been here and recruited here of, of the talent level in Texas. What's kind of Nebraska's um, not mission statement per se, but what's kind of the thought process right now of, of how important the Lone Star State is to, you know, the mission moving forward in Lincoln, Nebraska? When we, we sit together as a staff and we talk, and I've had to miss some of these meetings because I've been back and forth, but that one of my very first ones that I sat in, Bob Wager was in there and Garrett McGuire, and, uh, you know, that's fun, you know, to be on staff with other people that, you know, have lived in Texas. And, and of course, you know, the, some of the guys that, that are, you know, with Matt from, from the Baylor staff, I mean, Coach Satterfield and Ed Foley and mm-hmm. Evan Cooper. I mean, the, I don't, I, I'm probably missing some of them, but you guys know them and you love them. And uh, they know how big Texas is and, and how, how great our high school football is. So, um, you know, the emphasis is, you know, we, we have certain states that we pluck out and, and we have an emphasis on it. And then we have some states that, um, we know, you know, there's some athletes there that we want. And, I mean, it, it's so uh, meticulous, the process that they have in, re- in scouting and recruiting. And uh, the Texas, uh, it, it's just a proud feeling to, to say how much they target it. And, you know, he really wants to have that presence, just even though we're in Nebraska. Um, 
And I'm, I'm very happy and excited about that because you know, on Saturday, he's sending me to a Texas High School Coaches Association meeting in Houston uh, to talk about Nebraska football. And, and I, you know, I think a lot of people wouldn't think, you know, you're going to use your chief of staff that way, but that's not, that's not how it works for Coach Rule. He, he wants every one of us to contribute and, and give back to the program. And if, you know, if that's the way that I can do it, then I'm more than happy to do it because I, I know, you know, what a gold mine we have here in Texas. When Nebraska decided to leave for a lot of money and the Big Ten, and then, of course, they have struggled for many years. They just have been a shell of themselves, and that's what he's trying to recreate along with you and others. But they did get away from Texas, and one of the thoughts was the Big 12, at least they could guarantee they would be playing games wherever it might be in the state of Texas. There seems to be, as you mentioned, a recommitment. It doesn't mean because you're not a part of a conference that plays here you can't recruit here is that kind of because five six players i think on the current class that just signed are from all throughout the state of texas yeah they they are and um you know it, it's funny because you know i i think we all remember and everybody remembers it in a different way just the glory days of nebraska and how many texas players were on that roster and how you know it, it just declined steadily that it wasn't their their focus it wasn't their emphasis and y'all know how that goes. When you change head coaches, I mean, they, they're, they're going to identify their talent pool where they identify it. And for some reason, you know, Texas fell out of that equation. I, I don't understand it. I, I know y'all probably don't because y'all know how talented our state is. And you, you got to think that that had something to do with the decline. Um, and, you know, he, another emphasis that he's made, just I think it's important to say this, is they, you know, a lot of the Nebraska kids, um, you know, in all the – uh, school communities there were not going um, to to uh, Nebraska University, University of Nebraska, excuse me. And and so it's just been interesting. It's an interesting dynamic, you know, how we're walking through it. But when it comes to the Texas uh, emphasis, I mean, it is it's unbelievable that they they had moved away from it. This is my personal opinion, uh, and there's no doubt that we're going to to benefit from that uh, programmatically over the next you know several years. Yeah, it's funny to think that that somebody would to kind of move away from Texas or, or Florida or, or wherever. Look, you can go fish in anybody's pond, but if I want a, a trophy fish, I've got to go to certain spots, right? Right. That's a great. Oh yeah, agree, agree. It's interesting. I I, I just don't. You know, you get inside there, and I mean, I told Coach Will, you know, when I very first visited with him, you know, I was trying to do some research, make sure I was you know completely knowledgeable to have that conversation with him, and maybe just give you know my my thoughts on it. And, you know, but once you get internal to there, um, the resources that the University of Nebraska pours into all of their athletic programs is just incredible. I mean, not just the facilities, because those are, you know, we're going to be moving into a new football facility in June that will be the best in college football. And, you know, it's, and that counts, right? Those things count, but it's all the other moving parts, the support pieces behind it. Uh, that puts that that athlete in a position to be successful, and especially you know with our football players. And um, I it, I just I feel it feels like an untapped resource when you're you know kind of just observing, you know what what happened maybe previously. And I and I don't I don't mean to be judgmental because that's not what I'm being, but that's honestly what it feels like. And and you know that the ceiling is way higher than what they were performing at. So it's going to be a really exciting season uh, here in 2023. And and I think we're all ready for it to start, but we're not ready for it to start because we, we've got to get these kids, you know, ready to go, get their minds right, all that good stuff. Charles Brightup, Jamie Harrison, among many others that have been a part of the uh, upper echelon uh, and leadership in the UIL, Bill Farney from back in the day as well. Uh, and now your name is a part of that as well, as part, as the leg part of the legacy of that. What does that mean to you? Ah, uh, well... Uh, you know, I don't know that I look at myself in, in that class that you just called out, but I, I can say that, you know, I just was glad to be a part of it. Um, you know, my number one goal in my career when I started way back in 1993 at Lake Centennial as a head softball coach and a, and a PE teacher, uh, I realized really quickly I wanted to be a part of that organization. And I hoped and dreamed that I could be the athletic director and, and that I was able to follow that dream into a reality. And um, when you look across the landscape of our sports uh, in Texas, all of them, um, I'm just so proud of the contributions that, you know, I was able to make collectively with a, with a team full of really strong leaders. And uh, it, it'll be a, 
a, you know, a moment in my life um, and in my career that I will never forget and, you know, I'll forever cherish it. Dr. Braddock is the one that, that, you know, called me by name and said, hey, would you like to be our AD? And um, it, it was it was awesome why it lasted. And it was so hard to, to make this decision. But, man, it's hard. You know, I like to pick my leaders and uh, that I work for. And there's just – it was a no-brainer to go to work for Matt Rule. Uh, again, Dr. Elsa, we appreciate it. Went to Midway, Midway alum, as you said, in part of the school's song, and then led a massive organization, the UIL, and now you go and try to help uh, rejuvenate. That's that's fair to rejuvenate a program that's been it's been uh, kind of uh, dormant in, in many ways, and we've seen Matt Rule turn things around at Temple and Baylor uh, with leadership as well. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Are you still stuck in the ice or snow or whatever? I, it, it was kind of better today. But I know you kind of got stuck somewhere with the weather. <laughs> so my cere- my ceremonial last day, the whole reason that I was here, you know, this week was to go to UIL for my last day in the office on January 31st. And guess what? I got iced in to my house, just like everybody in the greater Austin area. So I didn't even get to say a proper goodbye to, to all of our staff. I'm hoping to, to figure out how to make that work still because the university's still closed tomorrow. So, uh so, yes, I'm icing just like everybody else. You would think we kind of swapped, you know, weather with Nebraska, you know. <laughs> and I, maybe I'm just getting a taste of it before I leave Texas. Thank you for your time and hope to see you soon. Good luck with the, the the convention coming up as well that you mentioned or the speaking engagement you have. Tell Coach Rule we said a lot, a hello and thanks for your time today. I will. Thank you all for having me. Dr. Susan Elza, Nebraska's Chief of Staff. Uh, 